Welcome back to the program, you beautiful people. My name is Dr. Dan, and as some of you might know, I am a pharmacist turned obesity expert. Today, we are talking about Wagovi and the pancreas. And unfortunately, I don't have a sample Wagovi pen, so I've got Ozempic, which is like the next best thing because both of those drugs contain some megalotide. Now, some of you might know the good when it comes to Wagovi and the pancreas, but most of you have probably been focused on the bad. In particular, how medications like Wagovi and Saxenda may cause pancreatitis or pancreatic cancer. And so today, we're going to talk about if this is true or not, how does it potentially happen, and give you the whole lowdown as to whether it is something we need to be concerned about. So let's get into it. And as always, you beautiful people, don't forget to hit that subscribe button right down there, you know, the big red one, so you can make sure that you don't miss out on another episode. As well, you can check me out on my other channels at the official Dr. Dan is the handle. We're on the tick, the talk, the gram, you name it, we are out there. As well, check out my website, healthevolved.co. Again, that's healthevolved.co. O is in orange, where you can book a free consultation with myself to see if you are a good fit for our program. Now, to start, the pancreas is a, is a cool little organ. It actually kind of sits behind our stomach and it has a huge number of functions in terms of digestion, producing a number of hormones, and controlling our blood sugars. In particular, it releases two hormones. First one is insulin, which helps to bring our blood sugar levels down. The second one is glucagon, which helps to bring our blood sugar levels up. And as you might have heard me mention before, the drug or the class of medications that is found in Wagovi, Saxenda, Trulicity, and all the rest are called GLP-1 receptor agonists. And they mimic our naturally produced GLP-1 hormone. And thereby mimicking our GLP-1 hormone that we naturally produce, it exerts the similar effects. So what does the GLP-1 hormone and the GLP-1 medications by association, if you will, do at the level of our pancreas. The first thing that happens is they will actually stimulate the pancreas to produce more insulin to bring our blood sugar levels down. In this situation, I'd like to think about it as the GLP-1 is giving the pancreas a little bit of a massage in order to help it work more efficiently. And like any good massage should be, GLP-1 is also helping the pancreas to become healthier. And in this way, what it does is it helps to prevent cells in the pancreas from breaking down and, hey, might even generate new cells as well. And all of this is going to help with overall insulin production and managing our blood sugars. And so what the combined effect of this is, is helping you to bring your blood sugar levels back down to normal, such as if you have a meal, post-meal, blood sugar levels go up, GLP-1 hormone then acts at the pancreas, insulin's released and brings the blood sugar levels down, glucagon production is decreased, so there's not more sugar being produced, and this goes to the same situation as diabetes in how it helps you to manage those blood sugars. So that's the good stuff. Now, what about the bad stuff? In terms of pancreatitis and pancreatic cancer, this is where things get a little bit trickier. And the reason for this is that it's been difficult for us to link the GLP-1 medications or even the GLP-1 hormone directly to causing pancreatitis or pancreatic cancer. In fact, only about 2% of all the cases of pancreatitis are thought to be due to a particular drug. And just an FYI, this 2% includes all the potential medications that are out there, not just the GLP-1 medications. And before I get too far ahead of myself, for those of you that don't know, pancreatitis is like an inflammation of the pancreas, whereas pancreatic cancer is, well, hopefully pretty explanatory. Now, in a majority of the cases where GLP-1 has been implicated or associated with causing pancreatitis, there has been another underlying cause or reason for that pancreatitis to actually occur. For example, sometimes rapid weight loss, and in some cases not so rapid weight loss, 
can produce gallstones. And gallstones hanging out in your gallbladder can kind of be like a frat house. You see, if you live next to that frat house, you know, the frat house, they might be living it up, doing their thing and, you know, having a great time. But if you're like a responsible adult that has learned to value sleep and, you know, doing adult things at a decent time during the day, you might be a little bit pissed off. The same thing goes for your very responsible pancreas that sometimes is neighbors to the gallbladder and ultimately those rambunctious gallstones. And so if those rambunctious gallstones are causing some problems, well, that can piss off your pancreas and voila, we get pancreatitis. So as you can see, the GLP-1 medication did not directly cause the pancreatitis. It was more of an indirect effect in that GLP-1 can lead to weight loss, sometimes not so rapid, sometimes very rapid, and that can lead to the production of gallstones, and the gallstones doing their gallstony things can ultimately lead to a pissed off pancreas and causing that pancreatitis. And another example is that if you have, say, diabetes or insulin resistance or some kind of elevated blood sugars, you are automatically at a higher risk of developing pancreatitis because of those conditions than compared to the general population. And so many people who have those conditions take the GLP-1 medications, they actually take them to potentially manage those conditions. And so what can happen is that pancreatitis can ultimately develop but it wasn't because of the GLP-1 hormone. It was because of the condition itself of elevated blood sugar that ultimately led to the pancreatitis. So hopefully you can see how the GLP-1 medications might get wrongly implicated in causing pancreatitis when there is potentially something else that's going on there. It's kind of like how my mother might wrongly implicate me back in the day of tracking mud into the house when I have a younger and much less respectable brother that could ultimately wear my boots and track me track that mud into the house just as easily but i digress now saying all of the above does not mean we have definitively ruled out that glp1 medications do not directly cause pancreatitis there might be some situations where yes a glp1 medication could directly be the reason for the pancreatitis one kind of way that i think about it is you know the glp1 masseuse might be getting a tad bit too aggressive in terms of their massage now, don't get me wrong, when I go for my deep tissue massage, I expect some level of pain, but eventually that pain I'm hoping will turn into relief. But there are definitely some days where either I'm more sensitive or perhaps my therapist got into a fight with somebody I don't really know. And yeah, I can be left in a little bit worse shape than when I went in. And thus, something similar might be happening with GLP-1 and our pancreas. Something is just getting stimulated too much or what have you and ultimately leads to pancreatitis. Again, we don't know all the details at this point in time but that is kind of just one way to potentially be thinking about it. With regards to pancreatic cancer, there is even less evidence that the GLP-1 medications may be even associated with it. And in my opinion, there is essentially zero evidence that links the GLP-1 medications or associates the GLP-1 medications with pancreatic cancer. You see, the pathophysiology of pancreatic cancer and, well, pancreatic cancer itself is very complex. And yes, repeated episodes of pancreatitis can lead to potential pancreatic cancer. But again, having one episode of pancreatitis due to, say, a GLP-1 medication is very, very unlikely to lead to pancreatic cancer. It's kind of like smoking a single cigarette. That single cigarette isn't going to lead to lung cancer. However, if you smoke 20 cigarettes every day for 20 years, well, then we're going to have a different picture. Now, on the off chance that you don't believe a single word that I said, I have linked a ton of reviews down below in the description there that go over in detail of what the data or the totality of the evidence on this topic currently says. But for a brief summary, basically what each review has found when they looked at the totality of the data combined multiple studies that looked at the GLP-1 medications versus placebo, what they found is that the rates of pancreatitis and pancreatic cancer were essentially the same between both groups. And what each one of those reviews down there found when they combined all of the various data and trials and stuff like that that looked at GLP-1 medications versus placebo, 
they found that the rates of pancreatitis and pancreatic cancer were no higher than what was found in the placebo group. So basically, it didn't happen any significantly higher level than what was already going to happen in the population. And yes, there are some observational studies out there and some FDA reports that will say, oh, the GLP-1 medication caused pancreatitis. But again, these reports and these studies have the issue with confounders, which I've already talked about in terms of diabetes or some rambunctious gallstones leading to the pancreatitis. All in all, the risk of the GLP-1 medications and them causing pancreatitis and pancreatic cancer, it looks like the risk is exceedingly low. We can never say zero as this is science and new data can always come out. However, even if new data did come out and can Confirm some various findings or what have you, ultimately it would show that the risk is again very, very low. So that is Wagovi and the pancreas. I hope that kind of answers a question that I often get and gives you guys a bit more perspective in that regard. This was also supposed to be like an attempt at a much shorter video, and I think we we might have gotten there. Maybe, maybe not. We'll find out. But uh, yeah, yay for me. And in the meantime, everybody, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on another episode that come out every Monday, sometimes Tuesday. And of course, check me out on my other channels at the official Dr. Dan as well. Check out my website, healthevolve.co, where you can book a consultation with myself to see if you are a good fit for our program. Other than that, you beautiful people, always remember small tweaks lead to massive peaks.